Okay, welcome back, guys, to the summit. Today we have a very, very special guest, also a good friend of mine, Maor, aka the Wolf. <laughs> Uh, he's uh, he's my good friend from Tel Aviv. We've met a couple of years ago at the conference, uh, amazing SCM conference, and we've we've seen each other throughout the world. So uh, yeah. how are you today, man? Well, you know, it's like Corona vibes, and uh, I'm doing well. I'm more than glad to be here. I think this is an amazing opportunity, and it's it's the opportunity that we have just to feel like normal because we tend to you know we just go around the world and just meet all all the time and fly and stuff so i think a lot of us um are not really used to not travel so making this uh, virtual conference would at least make us feel like we're doing that yeah uh, it's true it's uh, the, the idea also okay i think it's a good thing that we're not traveling so i think at least for me it's it's good to be home for uh for once longer than, than a month period of time. But yeah, I think you travel right. more than me. Yeah, most of the conferences, yes. But uh, it, it's good. You meet a lot of good people. And uh, I, that's what we all like about the industry. And, and thank you for saying about the summit, for sure. We uh, want to put good content out there for the people since we don't have uh, an ability to, to travel anymore. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, let's, let's just start off, I think, with your journey. Like, uh, as far as I know, you've spent more than 20 million on ads on various uh, media platforms and traffic sources. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I, I think it's something to look up to. And I think for, for most people, they're, they're just curious, like, how did you get to it? And how were you able to scale? And like 20 million is a lot, right? So it's like, if you, at least when I heard them, I was like, wow, that's... <laughs> um, to be honest, I think when, when I first <laughs> wrote the intro, I wrote uh, 20 million because that's what I calculated. But... It's been so much more than that uh, since. Um, and, but yeah, yeah, my journey is, uh, is quite a cool story that I really like to tell. So I'm 31 year, years old. And yes, I live in Tel Aviv right now. But I was born in Jerusalem, which uh, is uh, the holy city. But it's also the second poorest city in Israel. Um, so currently I own multiple businesses uh, that are currently running and that I managed to develop and they, they go anywhere between SMS platforms where we monetize data um, to just pushing affiliates products and from the health and nutrition supplement space where we are running low nutrition which is like the upper side of vinegar gummies I don't think I have them here but um, it's like a really cool project that I think that maybe I learned the most out of all of the projects that, that I've done. But um, yeah, so a couple of years ago, maybe two and a half, three years ago, I opened up my first offline business, um, which is Boost Fitness Center. Um, and we were just about to branch out before all of this Corona situation started. And I also do consultations for really high level affiliates where I try to give a lot of my secrets out because I feel like everyone that would try to learn it would get to the point where they know it. So I don't keep any secrets. That's why all of my YouTube channel, a lot of my content is completely free. Uh, and uh, yeah, I also teach uh, digital marketing for beginners at Jolt. And of course, outside of those uh, stuff I'm doing conferences just like we're doing right now and also I'm developing uh, several new projects in the supplements vitamin space and uh, the loto space actually and regarding uh, what you asked about my journey uh, so yeah it, it began when I was just like uh, I think my digital marketing stuff started when I was like 20 years old and uh, I, I just understood back then that Jerusalem won't really be the right fit for me. Everyone told me, oh my God, you look like you came from Tel Aviv all the time. And it's like, <laughs> I, I decided, yeah, Jerusalem isn't going to be the place where I start my business and really develop. And yeah. I think that every entrepreneur has a point in time where a line is being drawn in the sand. And my point in time was hearing my mother tell her sister um, that it's the middle of the month and we don't really have money to buy food basically she asked for help and that was the point specific point in time where I told myself okay I'm gonna be a millionaire by the time that I get to 30 
and I don't care. And it wasn't about everything that it is about today. Like, I really feel old saying that, but it wasn't about those uh, Grey Goose, Balvedeers, Bentleys, you know, stuff like that, Lambos and stuff. It was just about making a better life for my family and for me. I wanted my mother to go around, travel, eat, and do stuff outside of just cleaning the house and making us food and stuff. Uh, it took me 10 months after just really grinding. Like I'm trying to get to, to that obsession level ever since, just like trying to grind it out. It took me 10 months. I made my first million, closed all of the debt, flew them to Vegas, had some fun. And ever since then, it's been such a wild ride because we developed so many companies and did so many things. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that, that's the, my, my story. So I worked at the digital agency back then for, it was like crazy. It was 365 days. Exactly. It was like the complete perfect plan. Um, and, and that's it, you know, uh, that, that's my story. It's, uh, I, I obviously know you for a longer period of time, but I didn't know like the, the drive with your, with your mother and your sister. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, not, not to me it in a bad way, but like most of the people that have like an inner drive where we all saw our parents also from my side and uh, like, like us, there's tons of people that, that come from far, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is like the inner drive for us eventually. Right. So it's, Definitely. uh. Man, uh, I think it's it's a fascinating story, and it, I can see, especially with you, like you're just constantly in the grind, man. Like uh, yeah. you put you put very good content out, and especially with your YouTube channel, uh, we uh, we like I love to see people like you how you just give anything out without asking much back in return, and. Man, for the YouTube channel, well, actually, it's a good good thing to add it uh, here down in the video. We'll add like a short button for, for people to follow your YouTube channel because uh, I think everyone should follow your YouTube channel. Uh, you you do so much good content. Uh, you put so much good content out there. So, Thank you so much. Definitely help like you boost, really high uh, level stuff. So it's everything that I really, um, I try to make time to do it. I do it only for fun and I do it because I believe that Everyone should have uh, that value for free. I don't believe in running a course and stuff. And believe me, I could have opened up several courses and people ask, ask me almost daily. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like... Um, it's giving uh, back. Yeah, I, I hear like two things uh, over and over again. Like, do you have a course? And people just ask me, why the wolf all the time? So the reason for that is firstly... That's going to be one of my name, expression. Yeah, well, my name is, is really hard to pronounce in English sometimes, and it always sounds like a horny cat. So it's like, meow, meow, something like that. Uh, so that's the first reason why I decided to just brand myself differently. And we're all in marketing, so we know how branding is. Um, so, so that's the first thing. And the second thing is that I think that what really makes me spe special is the fact that I'm not just an affiliate. I'm an agency owner, an affiliate, and a business owner. So... I kind of completely understand uh, a lot or every part of like the business, like from the litigation part and the taxes part to how to manage partners and, and, and how to, to really understand the numbers, like from building a brand, from the analytics part and just to running a store on Amazon. And um, that's a big thing because when you ask a lot of like digital buyers or media buyers or internet uh, entrepreneurs in general, you would see that most of them would just stick to something specific. They are either affiliates or they have an agency or maybe they are the advertisers. I mean, they, they own the business. And I think that that really makes me special. And for me, that's all about just like uh, being the wolf. And like the second part would be that um, I think that what makes a big difference about me is that I'm what I call, and I created this, this, uh, this name, it's like a full stack media buyer. Okay. So the reason why I'm a full stack media buyer is that I know and have tons of experience on almost any media buying platform. Um, and I also risked my own money to get that experience. So I don't do uh, any, I, I, it's not like I have a specific media buying platform that I really like. I just look at every campaign and every brand and every product 
as like a complete uh, ecosystem, you know, that ecosystem that I need to build the correct structure for, okay? Because you know how they say it's been so much time that I've been building those campaigns, running and optimizing them, that it completely, you know, it's like on the other side of my brain where it's completely automatic. It's not something that I really plan out. So that's, that's uh, what I... All right, so I think it's a very cool name because also you're, when I ask you for your biography, it's that full stack uh, marketer, yeah, or media buyer, exactly. So, and it's true, like we, we've had we have, we've had conversations before that you said like, hey, I know everything about so many traffic sources. So it's uh, I don't mind to talk about any any topic you wish. I was like, oh, it's the first time someone says something to me like this, you know. Normally, it's like. I made your Facebook or I made your native or, or pops or something, you know, and, and then also specified with a, with a different vertical and, and with you, it doesn't matter. Like I've, I've seen you run tons of different things and now also launching your own brand glow, which, which I saw looks amazing. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. So maybe I should, uh, I should definitely try it out. Product and we're getting amazing reviews for it, but it's been such a wild ride because it's such a different game even in terms of like the structure of the campaign and how it really works, it's like, oh my God, it's, I've, I've, I've had the craziest experience with seeing how policy inside Facebook, inside even native pl platforms, how they look at, at, at a brand differently than an, an affiliate offering, how they, they allow certain things and that was a big, big uh, difference and mindset change that I had to make. And also the campaign structure, because when you run a lot of like brand, uh, a lot of affiliate offers, then you can't run on the brand name, for example, and you can't do a lot of stuff. And I, I really got to see how it is when you put money from something that doesn't exist and how you create a brand and how everything connects to everything, how the native platforms help Amazon and how Google search, like the complete funnel, you know, how do you run top of the funnel stuff and go uh, right till uh, the end, which is crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fascinating to see very, like, I think it, it's super cool actually, man. Like, I think I can also learn, learn a lot from, from that part. Uh, but, but let's, let, let's dive a little bit more into, into Glow and how, how you've been able to launch it. And also I think in these times, like do you see an increase in sales or how have you been able to adapt uh, like the strategies right now, like also like campaign structure maybe, or like how has sales been going lately like with, with COVID-19, with the e-commerce side, obviously with more people sitting at home, it's, uh, it's been a wild ride uh, so far and, and it, look, it doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon. Um, yeah, when, when it's back when it started, it felt like it's going to be something like, you know, maybe a, like a hurricane or something that passes like a week after, you know, um, and now it seems like, you know, there's a new, a new reality that we all live in, which is kind of crazy and we don't know how it's going to end. And I don't think that it's going to end. It's just like that we're going to adopt and life is going to be at least um, in the next year, it's going to be quite different. But I think that we have, the, the, the biggest thing that I learned would be the, the, that our industry is so amazing. Like I am already in love with our industry, but I completely re fell in love with our industry, uh, with all of this situation. Like, I mean, I don't think our industry and that my products are bulletproof. Well, definitely not. And I see a lot of uh, industries or niches like the arbitrage industry that have taken, uh, taken a big, big hit. Um, but compared to other industries, uh, we're definitely lucky. Like, I mean, people tend to, to say how fast this industry changes and how, uh, how it does change quite fast. But I, I, I think, I think it's, it's, like everything in life, it's good and bad. Like, but but COVID nineteen, like the coronavirus, really showed us that we're also stable, and I really like it. Like, we're stable in two main ways: like the ability to stop losses when we have to, and the ability to move into new realms when 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 needed. So, um, like specifically about myself, I just like really opened up so many types of businesses that I really need an apocalypse, you know, because I'm a Capricorn, so I really, I'm looking for stability all the time. So 
that's exactly the apocalyptic scenario that I was building everything uh, around, you know. So uh, even, even with my offline business, even with Boost, we've uh, completely adapted. I think less than 24 hours after we completely shifted into, um, into uh, an online type of like uh, model and we, we, we've made such a big uh, difference. I think we're maybe the only studio, at least the only luxury studio that's doing the online stuff professionally and actually charging money for it. So we've managed to stay afloat uh, and, and, and really uh, survive this situation and more than survive, maybe thrive because we've been getting tons of free PR and we've been exploding. So. Regarding Glow, I think we were uh, also just like, we, we are really lucky because we're in the right industry, meaning uh, when Amazon decided to cut a lot of uh, verticals and niches, they decided to keep uh, the vitamins and supplements industry uh, because it's uh, vital. And, um, and yeah, we, we've been just like pushing ads and it's e -com and everyone knows that e really uh, surged when everything yeah. Yeah, happened. So... We've been thriving on that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's it, it's amazing timing for for that for sure. And yeah, I I take supplements every day, so for sure. Like I think like it's nine or or seven uh, between seven and nine pills every day, depending on how my sleep uh, went also. But uh, man, glow is definitely something to look out for. I want to uh, definitely try uh, try butter from your side. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. Let, let I think it's also good to. Uh, to jump, you, you've prepared an amazing presentation for us. Uh, I think it's definitely good to switch over to that for, for now. And uh, it's, it's about uh, like the Google Ecom and also like how you've been able to obviously manipulate uh, a, a, another good traffic source, Google uh, and, and lead gen. So maybe it's, uh, it's a good time to switch over to that right now and, and see how you've been able to also implement it into your business yeah, definitely. So just before we start, I just want to say that I really think that Google Ecom and Legion yeah, is just is the shit, okay? And the reason why I think uh, it's such a good uh, thing is it's just that, first of all, it's just like stable. And second of all, it's really scalable, okay? It's scalable traffic source and it's quality. Um, and, and people tend to go to Facebook because it's such a plug and play type of thing. They just launch a campaign, it starts converting. You don't need a lot of knowledge. You don't, like the, the, the algo really um, covers for you uh, in a lot of like uh, stuff. So you can really target bad and you can do a lot of mistakes, but the algo would still give you. Uh, so on Google, you can actually build campaigns that would become money machines that you can trust. And, and, that's, and that's where the stability aspect inside Google uh, comes. That's what I really like. And the algo doesn't change as often as Facebook, uh, for example. So the accounts don't get banned nearly as much. The amount of new, feature, uh, new features, new placements, new beta tools uh, available there is crazy. And also the support you can get from Google would be much better than uh, Facebook. And yes, in terms of manipulations, the presentation is going to talk about some new stuff inside Google and so many manipulations that you can do. Some of them would be really simple, but stuff that people are just missing. So we're going to cover those in a few minutes and uh, we're going to jump into the presentation and cover some of those uh, new features that I'm currently using. But there are so many manipulations that you can do uh, just to crush your competitors. Um, and even like optimize and manipulate those really closed system campaigns like the smart campaigns or the shopping network campaigns. And that's something that we're gonna uh, go after. And that's it, let's, let's uh, start. Yeah, let's switch over to yeah, my screen. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, secret Google manipulations, how to hack Google's network and crush competitors. Um, I already introduced myself. I'm an affiliate, an agency, and a brand owner. I have multiple companies. I also have a small boutique affiliate network where we strategize with affiliates on how to scale uh, those uh, stuff. And really, uh, we take high level affiliates and crush offers. And I also own Boost Fitness Center, which is my uh, first offline business. 
and we are also doing Glow Nutrition, cool, cool supplement vitamin. We talked about this project. So why you should listen? I need you guys to understand, I'm the guy who's actually running the stuff. So I'm the guy who sets up the campaigns, optimizes, and, and runs the, the stuff, okay? Another thing you should know about me is that I don't really have or take a lot of employees. I mainly scale partnerships because that's what I believe in. I think that a partner and the right partner would work for you and that uh, the right partner would just like um, be much more involved than an incentivized employee. I'm also in direct contact with all the platforms where a managed partner with everyone. So uh, also you should know that I uh, am actually, I, I tested and I am testing everything that we're gonna talk about today. And I've already uh, done so many consultations where we implemented those methods and I, I managed to see how those methods change campaigns and how campaigns started converting if they didn't convert in the past or they uh, just increased the ROI in total. Uh, so unlike a, a lot of other talks, I'm gonna tell you uh, about specific strategies where you can implement and not just like maybe a case study where you don't really have a specific thing to implement and someone just did something that relates to his business. Uh, so I'm, the stuff that I'm going to share with you today is the stuff that I'm currently using to crush campaigns and to scale them. Okay, I spent tons of money so you guys could get this amazing shortcut. And I actually lost a lot of money trying a lot of different strategies. Uh, so you guys would be able to take these optimization and scaling methods that I'm using today. Okay, so let's go guys, let's do it. We're gonna start. What we're gonna cover today we're gonna talk about automated campaign manipulations, okay? So we're gonna talk about networks that are really closed systems, like uh, the shopping network and the, the new discovery network. And if you guys don't know the discovery network, we're gonna talk about um, the new opportunities there, how to treat it, how to manipulate it, what we should do. Uh, we're gonna talk about how to hack CTR in search ads. I'm gonna give you a few wolf tips that are gonna uh, really help you scale those campaigns and also take down the CPC by a lot. And then Aki and me are going to do some Q&A uh, small session with, um, with uh, talking about everything. Okay, so we're gonna start talking about automated campaign manipulation. So automated campaigns uh, would be any campaign that Google basically optimizes on their own, okay? So it's just like really Google's trying to push the new AI stuff, the new uh, machine learning stuff. Um, so with structures and certain manipulations I'm going to cover now, we're gonna uh, help you basically cut a big chunk of the costs and improve ROI and also scale it because in, in basic it's going to give you just like so much control over those campaigns that you don't have control over. So like in terms of like uh, the control would, would come in so, so many different ways. It would come from the budget side, side and it would come from like so many stuff you're gonna see it in a second. So in campaigns like the shopping network, uh, our targeting and bidding options are so limited right now. Uh, so we can just basically bid adjust devices. We can target certain custom audiences, like maybe remarketing lists, or just like an Excel file with customer the data that we uploaded. And we can sometimes ex exclude certain uh, keywords. So we first need to understand how limited and limiting those uh, things could be. And that's just like a crucial part, okay? So this is basically a, a structure that works really good for me and that has given me amazing results. The first part would be just setting up a normal shopping campaign, okay? So I'm gonna talk about specifically shopping campaigns, but you can implement so many stuff that I'm talking about um, regarding like legion campaigns and stuff, but a shopping campaign uh, and the shopping network in specific would be a good example of how we can do it. Um, just because it's like a closed system and you can do those manipulations there. So um, 
there is nothing really much to add here since you can just open up the campaign. Uh, you, you can't really write the ads because the ads are coming straight from the Google Merchant Center. Um, and you can't really choose a lot of different targeting options. What I do suggest is that if you have a large uh, or any remarketing list that you, or maybe you did upload an Excel file with, with your customer lists, that you choose two shopping campaigns and, and basically create two shopping campaigns at least while excluding those audiences from the main campaign. So if you have a remarketing list, a custom audience maybe, uh, and then we'll have like a wide, more general type of campaign, we're gonna have three campaigns that you create, okay? So the first one would be remarketing, uh, just like um, including the remarketing and not excluding any other audience. The second one would be the custom Excel file that we're gonna include, not excluding anything there. And the wide range campaign would be a campaign where we just exclude the remarketing list and the costume audience list. Um, so we have three campaigns. We've excluded audience from the general campaign, not excluded anything from the other targeted specific campaigns. Okay, so we're gonna run it for something like seven days. And after seven days, we'll go, we're gonna have some data. So we're gonna create some duplicates of that campaign and start creating the structure, okay? These new campaigns are going to be divided into two parts, devices and keywords, okay? We're gonna have keyword segmentation anyway, okay? The devices part is just when competition is super high on, for example, maybe desktop devices or mobile devices, it really uh, changes between um, between uh, one campaign and another and the competition and the time and, and of course the geo. But um, if you just see uh, maybe higher competition on a certain device or that you see that your conversion rate is much, much higher on a certain device, just like maybe a desktop device, then you'd be rather off building a separate campaign for mobile and one for desktop. Unless you, you don't really have that, the only uh, structure, manipulation, and segmentation that you're going to do would be keywords, okay? So, meaning uh, if you see, uh, if you do see a high uh, competition or high conversion rate on desktop, you just wanna open up a separate campaign. And when you do that, don't forget to uh, manually bid adjust mobile at like a 20% decrease or something like that that would give uh, a higher prioritization for desktop, and then you can maybe increase throughout uh, the time uh, the bidding for the desktop. So while the keyword segmentation is going to be divided um, into two or three parts, okay? So the, the, the first campaign that we're gonna do would be the high volume keywords. The second campaign would be the low volume, but high conversion rate, high converting keywords. And the third one would be branded keywords, your own brand or competitors. So if, if you have a, a big, big competitor or two, maybe three competitors in the field, you, you would want to open up separate campaigns just for them. So what we're going to do is open up those campaigns. And if, for example, we have three campaigns, one of them is going to have all the keywords except from those high volume keywords excluded okay so we're going to exclude everything that we were doing at the other campaigns if you've opened up uh, a competitor shopping campaign for example we're going to exclude everything that we're doing uh, under those campaigns just to give different prioritization okay um and uh the the other one is going to have everything except the low volume but high converting keywords and the other one is going to have everything excluded except from the branded keywords. Okay, it's also very important under the settings to uh, decide in terms of priority which, which one of those campaigns is going to get the higher priority. So the, my rule of thumb is that uh, as narrow as you go, the priority needs to go up. So your brand needs to be at a really high priority, the competitor brand needs to be at a high priority, and then you can set up to medium or low priority those really gen generic uh, type of uh, campaigns that are just like really high volume, okay? Since we're not really overlapping here, it's not such a big thing, the prioritization, but it's something good to set up just like as a good practice, okay? 
So with the first campaign, we want to give the system a limited CPC, okay? You can't really do a lot of like uh, bidding options inside the shopping networks. So we're going to just give the system a limited CPC that's lower than what the system already gave us when we ran it for seven days. So for example, we ran the campaign for seven days and we saw that uh, those high converting, sorry, those high volume keywords are uh, just like giving high volume for maybe three, three dollars, maybe one dollar a click, that's the CPC. Then we're gonna do anywhere between five to 20% uh, decrease on that. So we're gonna just limit the CPC to maybe uh, 0.8, maybe uh, $1 CPC. And the thing is that uh, we're, we're gonna just limit it and we're gonna test it daily, okay? So what we're gonna do is basically just increase the budget and see when the system doesn't really uh, uh, use all of the budget, that's when we can increase the CPC. We're not going to increase the CPC in any other situation. And we're going to actually lower the CPC as long as the system gives us the, the, the right type of traffic. So, for example, the first day we've set up $1,000 spend and the CPC was limited to $1. We've used all the budget. We can take it down by 5 to 10%. Let's take it down to 0.9. Did the system use all of the daily budget for the campaign? Yes, we're gonna take it down. So that's what we're gonna do. So the second and third campaign are going to basically run automatically, okay? So those low volume but high conversion rate uh, campaigns are going to run. Those branded campaigns are going to run without any uh, CPC limitation. Um, so the only thing you still need to remember is that you're gonna still need to exclude a lot of the keywords that are going to jump in since uh, those campaigns are always searching for new keywords but the initial seven days uh, depends of course on the budget that you've spent but the initial seven days are going to be uh, and, and should cover most of those keywords that you need to exclude in order to start getting that ROI. Um, so this method is going to give you so much stuff. Um, and, and most of the guys that are running the shopping network, at, at least from consultations that I'm doing, we just run one shopping campaign and that's it. Okay, so it's going to give you so much stuff and control over such closed system campaigns. Uh, so it's gonna help you control the, the budgets of the branded keywords and the high volume keywords, just for starters, which is crazy and amazing. Uh, it's going to extract the most out of those high conversion rate keywords because of the manual bidding, because of the time adjustments that you can do. And also it's going to help you to basically never miss a sale coming from where you know good traffic is coming from because those really high volume keywords are, aren't going to use all of your daily budget. Are you with me, Aki? <laughs> Yeah, I, I still am for sure. I'm following. Uh, I'm taking notes actually as we uh, as, as you go through. So don't worry about me. We're, we're just... completely geeking out here. <laughs> my, my, my I love it. Really geeky. Yeah, I love okay, it. So I just have mine on mute just in case. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm just like checking in because I want to feel like I'm not alone. I'm, you know, everyone is so like, like so I have, uh, yeah. I'm taking quick notes here. So amazing, amazing. amazing. <laughs> I hope you guys that are actually viewing this um, are taking notes also, and if you have any question, just try and pop it. Okay, so the discovery network, uh, it's a new network, it's a new placement, such a big, big, big thing. Okay, so uh, what you need to know is that, first of all, it works for Ecom and Legion. It converts on any campaign that should work uh, if you have enough time and money and also the balls, okay? Um, so ads will appear on the YouTube homepage, the Gmail, and basically social and promotions. And you can look at the discovery network, uh, and that's a big, big thing that I'm going to, to uh, even really uh, focus on right here. When you write ads inside Google, and people that are used to running ads on Google, um, they need to make a big shift here because the discovery network would be Google's take on native ads and you, you really need to make such 
a big difference in terms of how you write and how you kind of like uh, entice people and make them more curious about those ads. Uh, because the, the, the placement is where you capture the user would be just like him scrolling down maybe a news feed or something like that. Um, and, and also if you have an Android phone and you just like scroll down to the left side of the screen, you know where you have like the discovery uh, kind of thing. Um, and, and that's also a placement where your ads would be. So this placement is really cool and it uh, would show, as I said, under YouTube's pages, under Google's news app, and some other Gmail stuff uh, if you have Android. And uh, that's amazing and cool. You need to know that uh, it's like under the beta stage, at least from what I know, it's not open for everyone, but if you are a managed partner, you should be able to ask it from your rep. Uh, it's a crazy, I can't even tell you how big of an opportunity it is right now because of the large inventory, uh, especially if you're running in geos like the, the United States, you're gonna get such a low CPC. Uh, I do have to tell you that there have been in the last uh, week or so, some uh, problems with it, uh, but just like any beta stage product, you get the good stuff, you get the bad stuff, and the good stuff is obviously the inventory, the scalability, and the CPC. I'm gonna share the first wolf tip of today, okay? So it's not such a big thing, but I've spent a ton of money on the Discovery Network by far, uh, by now, sorry, and uh, those, th this would be my tip, okay? So if you do get the Discovery Network open on your campaign, on your account, my personal tip would be immediately open up two campaigns on this network. The first one would be your remarketing audience. Nothing really to expand and, and tell you here, but you should open up a remarketing campaign. And the second one would be a costume intent list, okay? So first of all, just before I move to the costume intent, I wanna just like focus on remarketing, okay? When I say remarketing here, I mean, it's either you have a segment in the audience library where you have all of uh, your remarketing audience or that you uploaded, uh, once you spend uh, a certain amount of money inside any Google Ads account, you would have your costume uh, audience, which is basically uploading an Excel file with your, uh, with your uh, audience. So when I'm saying remarketing, I'm talking about either that or that, um, so that would be the first one. You, again, you need to start making adjustments in terms of your creative, okay? So if, for example, the, the, my search campaigns would have some ad that would say, uh, glow apple cider vinegar gummies, purchase them now, here's the promotion, blah, 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 blah. With the Discovery Network, I'm gonna go into places maybe like uh, a thousand, thousands of women already experienced good results from this product, or maybe these uh, apple cider vinegar gummies are a game changer. Something that is a bit more clickbaity, we're gonna, uh, uh, like the CTR would be a new thing that we need to recalculate here. I know that you guys are using and, and calculating CTR already, but that really changes a lot when we're talking about the discovery network. The second thing, as I started saying, would be custom intent. So custom intent meaning anyone that is a search for a specific phrase uh, would basically later see the, those ads inside the discovery network. Okay, so anyone that searched for your competitor, your brand, or any maybe generic keyword that's related, of course, uh, I would open up, for example, uh, three separate campaigns for those targeting. So your brand, just like a generic list of like keywords and um, your competitors, of course, and create those user segments under the custom intent list. And the reason why it's such a big, big, big thing is that basically you can get those search traffic audiences that is really expensive in general, okay? If you take like the litigation industry and vertical inside Google, you could pay easily up to $700, $800 per, per click. And in here, we're taking the discovery network that has currently super low CPCs, and we're taking that traffic, that user that searched for something, and we're taking him into our site and getting that traffic for 
סופר סופר לואו CPC. So, amazing, amazing, amazing opportunity, definitely, definitely try and push for the discovery network. We're going to talk about hacking CTR ads uh, inside the search network. Um, I, I think that some of you guys are already using one thing that I'm going to share with you, and some of you guys don't know the other one, like most guys won't know. So there are two main things now that could help you get over your competition when we're talking about the search network ads, okay? The first one is using emojis with display path, okay? So not many, many people know it, um, but you can use emojis under your ad, just like Google, like an emoji keyboard, and some emojis, get some emojis inside the display path, and understanding quality score and how Google basically uh, looks at CTR and how important it is under the holy grail. And I have another video for that, like talking about manipulations that, uh, um, how you basically can manipulate the, 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 the quality score that you have. But that's a big thing that, because that's going to give you such a big increase in CTR. Uh, it, it stands out so much. Okay, so that's GLOW. And that's like an example from Glow and how to use emojis. The second thing is super new, and most of you, I would bet, don't know it, uh, with using bold text uh, inside your ads, which is forced bold. Okay, so what you want to do is basically just copy a bold text into your search ads, and that would force it inside. And I have to say it's really new, so I don't know how... Google is going to treat accounts that are doing it, but I know that it's currently working and it's such a powerful, powerful way just to increase CTR, okay? So that, 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 those things that are, we've been talking about in the last couple of minutes uh, in this presentation are super big because th they could be such a game changer for your losing campaign, taking it from a losing campaign to a winning campaign all just like scale and get more ROI from, um, from the new campaign. So I'm gonna give you a couple of wolf tips. I don't even remember how many wolf tips I, 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 I wrote here, but let's get to the second wolf tip of today, okay? Uh, my wolf tip for today <laughs> would be uh, regarding how to negotiate brand search traffic as an affiliate, okay? So most of the times, like 99% of the times when we are running traffic as affiliates, we are not really allowed to run on the brand name in search traffic. But like, I, I have a, a, a bit of experience with consultations right now, and I can tell you that the stuff that I'm going to share with you right now actually work and would give you so many free um, conversions, almost free, I mean like really cheap conversions and would get your campaigns into like, the profitability level that you want. And also I think it's quite fair. So understanding how funnel work, uh, any, any funnel, any campaign that you're going to run uh, is such a big thing nowadays because a lot of your GDN or social, maybe you're running campaigns on Instagram, uh, a lot of that campaign is going to generate traffic and searches under the brand name, like the lower part of the funnel. And if you can't pick up the conversions there, then you're basically losing money. And the advertiser is getting that money. The thing is that most offers don't really take into consideration when they calculate your payout. Um, they, they don't really take into consideration how many free traffic or brand traffic they are getting, or maybe even organic traffic. So there are two things that you uh, can do that work for me most of the times and the guys that I'm doing consultations to. The first one would be just asking the network, asking the advertisers, are you running on all search engines? Okay, a lot of the times you would be surprised. Um, people are not running on Bing, people not running on Yahoo, and you can pick so many easy conversions there that it's crazy, okay? Also, you can run the competitor's uh, campaign there. But if they are, you should at least ask for the ability to search remarket your own traffic, meaning that you would run a brand search campaign on the Google search network, of course, 
but it would be just for people who already went into your landing page, your assets, your site. And um, of course, they came through traffic sources like maybe Facebook or maybe native campaigns that you ran. Um, so the excuse there would be that it's only fair that you get paid for the impressions that you're giving them. So that, that works a lot of the time. And my final wolf tip for today would be um, when, when you're running multiple traffic sources, okay, how you're going to segment traffic. So a lot of the times I would get into a consultation and I would see the audience library and they would have tons of audiences. They're running native, they're running Google, they're running search, YouTube, GDN, and you, you you would want to get like the initial part, the campaigns are working okay, everything, the remarketing campaign has an amazing CPA. And you would get to the point where you want to scale a campaign and get traffic for multiple uh, sources. And you're running a remar remarketing campaign on Google and it's converting good, you're happy. And when you scale into, for example, GDN or maybe other platforms like native platforms, all of a sudden your remarketing campaigns go to shit. And the reason is that the quality of traffic that you're getting is not as good as the quality that you had till now, because maybe you are only remarketing people who got after the pre-lender or advert advertorial, or maybe you just remarketed people who got from a good quality uh, tier one traffic source, like maybe search campaigns, okay? So what you wanna do is make sure you segment those users into different segments in the audience library. So that you'd be able to use and see what segments and traffic sources and campaigns is giving you a hard time. And that also gives you much uh, like amazing, great control over your remarketing campaigns just because you'll be able to be the just better target and scale those campaigns. Basically, so you can see that the traffic coming from Facebook has a higher conversion rate, amazing. You can bid adjust that campaign. Maybe, or, or that audience, you don't have to open up a different campaign. You can just do those adjustments inside, um, inside audience. Or maybe you see that certain targetings inside the, the native platforms uh, is really converting bad inside remarketing. You wanna exclude it, you wanna bid adjust it or something like that. Or maybe you want to do a different landing page. Maybe someone who comes from the search traffic engine um, that doesn't need to see the same landing page as, as someone who came from Tabula. So just to be clear, how you do it would be just tagging those users through a UTM uh, type of targeting. Just add the UTM, create that user segment uh, inside the audience library, and then you can basically the sky is the limit with what you can do here if you have a lot of traffic and if you're using um, a lot of traffic sources um, because you can, as I said, block those bad, bad uh, uh, platforms or targeting. And when, I'm saying, when I say targeting, I mean don't just create a segment for everyone who came through Tabula. Create a different segment for every campaign, every targeting. Believe me, you're going to be surprised at the scalability you can get to when you bid adjust uh, one audience. And that's it. Thank you so much, guys. I really hope you appreciate it. I have a ton more content and we can geek out inside my YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe there. And that's it. Aki. Uh, I want to applaud from my side for, for this uh, <laughs> amazing presentation uh, as, as we don't have people to applaud for you. <laughs> Man, uh, I, I think that the content is very valuable, especially I think when you just started off with, uh, with the first seven days that you should just try out more generic. I think uh, people, in my opinion at least, if I talk to affiliates, starting affiliates, they, they want to test as much as possible, but they don't really know or they think they know everything and they don't really know what to start at one moment. So it, it, you're just saying here, the best thing is to just start very generic, super yeah, easy. You, and, you just and need to start off with uh, just getting the data and once you have the data, you can manipulate so much stuff. And I think in general, uh, when we're talking about Google, but in general, um, I think everyone that wants to elevate the um, 
just take take their 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 campaigns to another level i think that creativity is the key and a lot of times when people are talking about just media buying and stuff like that they're saying okay it's quite analytical you just handle numbers and stuff um, but I, I think there is so much creativity to to implement into any campaign that when you really think about uh, those stuff uh, it, it takes your campaigns to a whole new level in terms of ROI, in terms of scalability, in terms of control and, and those are the, the stuff that we've been talking about right now. And uh, let, let's say someone has a, has a thousand dollar budget and to keep it uh, very low. For the very for the very beginnings, what would you do? How would you test like with your first thousand dollars, or maybe let's say um, you have a total budget of two thousand and you only want to spend a thousand on on yeah, the first Yeah, that's actually phase. a good question. So I think that when you have a, a narrow type of budget, you just want to test out some stuff. You want to make sure the campaign is converting. Then you want to go with the approach that we just talked about in terms of like how narrow the targeting should be. So. When you open up, for example, a custom intent campaign, you just really laser target those people who are already searching for your own brand name but didn't convert, or maybe your competitor's brand name, or just like really long tail specific keywords that relate to your uh, industry or your product. And that would give you maybe not like a super like scalable campaign, but that would give you, first of all, you won't spend a lot of money you won't be afraid that the campaign is going to go wild because you really narrowed it down. And you're much, much, much more likely to be profitable from the first couple of days. And that would give you extra budget just to keep pushing. And uh, yeah, I think that that's very useful. But also if you, uh, I liked, I was gonna tap into the custom intent and the remarketing uh, for sure. But like it says, so with the custom intent, you. That what you're saying is like at this moment, people they will spend the, the budget whatever they have. Uh, let's go back to the example of, of two thousand budget, and that they have thousand dollar to to just spend on on a testing phase. They would have a much more narrowed audience, so they would actually convert better with the second thousand budget. Let's say uh, if they have a second thousand dollar budget. Uh, yeah, so with that structure, you just want to open up several campaigns that are super super narrow and start converting from there and that that would be um that would be the way to go because you're basically building a small small ecosystem where you're getting that cold trafficking which has so much intent and you can use the custom audience inside gdn as well and inside youtube which is another talk where we're gonna do the next virt virtual summit or maybe the next summit um yeah, we're definitely, I would open up custom intent that helps save a lot of money. You're getting that search traffic for so much cheaper. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think that uh, that strategy would fit larger budgets as, as much as it would fit smaller budgets, definitely. Thanks, man. Well, definitely would be a good one. Uh, the, the, the next conference summit would be in October. So uh, oh, it's, yeah. it's good to have you. It would, it would definitely be good to have you there with a different topic since you're a full stack media buyer. But um, let's just tackle one of the, the, the last things I do want to talk about this presentation. I wrote down, uh, obviously, remarketing is very important for, for any, any product, if it's events or e-commerce or whatever you sell. Uh, people have showed interest, but like, how aggressive do you do you do you go with the clickbait? So you you've mentioned you want to go, you want to make people click, right? So uh, oh yeah, so where, when where I you talked the about line? yeah, so where, when I talked about um, clickbait, I just referred as like the the mindset needs to change when we're talking about the new discovery network. Why? Because the discovery network is Google's take on native ads, so. Um, it's you need to approach someone in a different way than you would approach someone who just searches for something, okay? So I, I, I can't really tell you that I completely cracked that. The discovery network is quite new, but I can tell you it really changes between one product and the other one because um, some people would just li like be super direct, super aggressive, just maybe offer something else and just like remarket that audience and tell okay, you've entered my site, now uh, there's 24 hours to get a 20% discount, blah, 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 blah. 
And that would work sometimes. And sometimes you would want to just re-educate them and tell them, okay, this project, product is just like changing so many lives and get them inside the pre-lender and just like run from there. So it really changes between one product and the other. Interesting. Then uh, I'll definitely, we're, we're definitely going to make some notes from it. Then actually the last thing, how, uh, how important is, is the use of emojis for, uh, for you? Because you, you've mentioned emojis. Uh, those like, two I... manipulations have changed so many campaigns. First of all, I have two campaigns that were losing money until I managed to get the CTR up on, inside the search ads. Uh, that's the first one. And the, the campaigns became so much more scalable. And it's hard to scale search campaigns if you're running on certain specific words but the emojis stand out so much inside the search feed, inside the search results page, and also the bold type of ads. It's like every time Google comes up with some new stuff, the first couple of months, if you are the first one to do it, um, first of all, you just like take advantage of the situation and get that uh, basically extra traffic in that time frame. but also I've learned that accounts that get that higher quality score because the system and the algo basically learn that they're getting higher CTRs, that gets you to the point where you kind of, even when everyone's using that manipulation, and in, by the way, it never gets to the point where everyone is using it, but when a lot, of, a lot more people are using it, yeah, it's, it gets you, um, it gets you, you, you still see accounts that started using it really early on, uh, take advantage of it la later on, which is amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, like, I'm, I'm a big fan myself of using emoji. I use it actually in uh, most of my, my content I distribute, even if it's ad or also on the platform, ABC platform. It's, I think there's a, it's a nice visual way of uh, a visual touch, obviously, but people instantly see what the topic is about, in my opinion. So they don't really have to find the guessing or guess what it's all about so you can and, and there's tons of emojis obviously so you can find mm -hmm. the right emoji just for that particular niche you're running in and or a headline even to make even when you send emails yeah uh, I, I, you make it more playful and playful is more in my opinion at least the the it brings people peace in their mind because it's like okay yeah. it's it's playful, it's fun, uh, let, me, let me just check it out. So mm -hmm. uh, at least that's what we've experienced, but that's why it caught my eye, especially when, when you mentioned it, because uh, I'm a big fan of emoji. And actually, I say on Slack, uh, someone, the designer said, hey man, why are you always- I'm a big fan of CTR and ROI. <laughs> so everything that yeah. gets me higher ROI or higher CTR works. than higher ROI, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense, man. I think, uh, man, we've, we've had an awesome presentation from, from your side. Uh, we had a very nice chat in the beginning. I think the people will definitely have a lot of good content from you to uh, watch back and learn from. If uh, people want to watch back anything, uh, follow him, uh, follow The Wolf, not my war. It's from now, it's The Wolf. <laughs> uh, on his YouTube channel, we're, we're adding a, a button on, from his YouTube channel just underneath the video. So you don't have to look for anything at all. He will, as far as I know, always deliver you really, really good fire content. Uh, hopefully, uh, so much. as much as, yeah, I, I learned a lot from you in the, in the past years by watching your videos. I see people posting some stuff about you, your repost, and I think that that's the end goal, right? Uh, it's not about the money game in, at one moment. As long as yeah. you, you can do what you want, you you get warm with, with the feelings that people have something from your content. And that, uh, I, I appreciate that also about you. And I've talked with, with most of the, the people here in the summit also, and, and everyone has the same end goal. At one moment, the first thing is you want to take care of your family, of yourself, do the good thing. When at one moment, it's not about it, and you, you want to distribute a lot of good content. And yeah. uh, you inspire me in that sense uh, to just put myself more content out there, help more people, and I learn a lot from you, man. And oh I God. really want to thank we you. We can't hide, <laughs> even if we're in the same room. But, we, 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 uh, can, we can do a high five. Like. <laughs> you're getting that uh, virtual, uh, virtual high five. <laughs> Yeah, very tough time. No, man, um, I want to really want to thank you today for for last. Thank, thank you, and uh, let, let's let's keep on pushing. Thank you for the opportunity and the, the initiative of running this uh, summit when everyone's sitting home. Thank you so much for that. 
It's a, it's a pleasure. I hope we will do much more in the future. So uh, have a good day, man. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.